uh, lawyer for the Trump campaign, subpoenaed this very week. Uh, so this is pretty newsworthy, your response to all of that. First of all, thank you for being here as well, sir. Thanks so much, Ari. Uh, my response has been public. I'm happy to share all of the information about the overwhelming amount of fraud that happened in the 2020 election in Arizona, in Wisconsin, and Georgia, and Pennsylvania. Of course, as you understand as a lawyer, and I believe, as you have referenced on your program, subpoenaing attorneys is a major problem for this illegitimate committee. But we'll see what happens. So, first, yes, we did report there's attorney-client privilege issues, so fact-check true. Second, when you say you will provide evidence, does that mean your intent is to cooperate, to provide testimony to this committee? Or my statement stands for itself. I'm happy to provide evidence of the overwhelming fraud that happened in the 2020 election to you, to the committee, to Democrats, to rhinos, to anybody out there. This election was stolen from President Trump. President Trump won the 2020 election. So in the, in the vein of that false claim, I want to show you some of what you... False and, according to you. Well, the Supreme Court, the results, you're aware that, that no, President the Biden Court, is oh, in the White oh, House. Let's but, not, but Boris, let's go one at a time. Your audience is a smart audience. Let's go Don't one lie at a time. Your audience. I want to show you on the war room, on Boris, the evidence. with Steve Bannon. This was in the run-up. Let's do it. We just heard Navarro talk about what he calls the sweep, what the committee members have referred to as a coup, what the Washington Post called overturning the government, albeit potentially peacefully. Here's you and Steve. Let's take a look. The vice president's got a lot of power, and that's very important to recognize. That's a huge deal. Repeat that to the audience. I'll make sure everybody understands this. you got the buried lead right there. The vice president has a ton of power in terms of opening and counting the electoral, uh, the electoral college votes at the joint session on the 6th. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. Just understand this. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. It's going to be moving. It's going to be quick. Two important questions, and I want to hear your response. I'll give you time. One, Boris, was that a direct reference to what Navarro calls the sweep? Was your plan to try to force a vote in the House to reverse the election outcome? And two, did you ever plan or knowingly see the storming of the Capitol or the violence that day as a way to increase the likelihood of that? Let me take number two first. Absolutely not, Ari. I had absolutely no idea that there was going to be any violence whatsoever at the Capitol. Nobody around President Trump, including President Trump, none of us had any idea that the events at the Capitol would happen. And actually, I'm on record as soon as I saw the events at the Capitol of tweeting that any and all violence needs to stop. I'm do you remember on record. What time you, do you remember what time you tweeted that since you brought it up? I think it was around, in the, uh, I believe it was in the 2 o'clock hour. It's about 2.30, so it was a bit into it, but go ahead. Well, there you well, there you go, Harry. I guess why'd why you have to ask if you already knew? But thanks for pushing my Twitter out here. I why appreciate do you, it. Why do you and Peter not understand that in interviews I ask questions? You, you both make it sound like a thing. <laughs> I'm going to ask you questions. This I'm, is the I'm, tweet you, you ask, did say you again. Facts me. matter. You said to all those protesting, please stay peaceful, respect the law. You posted that at 2:30, as you say. Um, so I give you back the the floor to discuss the the first part of the question. Were you on board with what we heard from Navarro, that you would kick this to the House and somehow override the results? Well, first of all, the results are the results based on legal votes. So the results, as I believe them to be, based on the 83,000 unlawful ballots in Maricopa County in Arizona, the 200,000 unlawful ballots in Wisconsin, the tens of thousands of unlawful ballots in Georgia, and the same in Pennsylvania, I believe the lawful results are that President Trump won the 2020 election. In terms of January 6th, the events actually inside the Capitol, the process, according to the Electoral Count Act, there was absolutely a plan and a process for there to be, uh, to, to be challenges right. to the Electoral so Count you, votes. Just, is, that, you is that know. a yes? Can I, is that a yes? No. That's a, that's, you asked me a question, I'm answering the question. That, that, that's a, a yes. So this is important because we may run down this in a future election. That's a yes that you I'm thought... I'm answering, Ari, I'm answering I'm, I'm your gonna question. I'm going to go back with you. You're going to get time, Boris. But that is a yes that what Navarro and Bannon are talking about, that you would use the so-called Electoral Account Act and other methods... What do you mean would, so-called? It's an act. It's not would so-called. That's what Would be called. to then try to have the House declare Trump the winner. Is that correct? Under the Electoral Count Act that was passed... In, in the 1800s, after the election of 1876, the count was passed in, the 18, in 1886. The Electoral Count Act lays out a process to challenge electoral votes. Okay. There was a process that was undertaken. And you're on record and there were this. So you, would you be open that, to doing that, 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 in, a future, that took place. in a future election if Donald Trump were to run again? 
the Constitution under the 12th Amendment and the Electoral Count Act lay out a process. Now, the interesting thing is that the act itself has never been challenged constitutionally. That's why there's a question as to the role of the vice president. I'm on record saying that I believe for the vice president to have a very significant role in that process. Others, such as John Yu, a constitutional scholar, also believe there's a significant role to be played by the vice president when he opens and counts the electoral votes. Okay, got your answer there. There's also been reporting about the attempt to seat uh, fraudulent electors. Um, is that something you ever worked on or would support, for example, in Michigan? That's so funny. It's not fraudulent electors, Ari. It's alternate electors. Because of the process, again, that's laid out in the Constitution under the 12th Amendment and the Electoral Count Act, there is a process for electors to be challenged. If those challenges are successful, you need an alternate slate of electors, just like happened in 1960 when the Hawaii slate was challenged. It was not challenged successfully, but there was an alternate right. slate set. So the, we Same have thing on the happened screen, in 1876. We have on the know. screen reporting of Republicans in Michigan saying they received a call from a Trump lawyer about that. A co-chair of the Michigan Party, the Republican Party, they're also speaking about that. Take a listen. We fought to see the electors um, when the Trump campaign asked us to do that. Did you make any call like that? I actually couldn't hear that, but he, as I, I just said... I can read it said, to you. Hold on. I'll read I'm, it to you. This is uh, sure. Chairman Maddox. Quote, we fought to seat the electors. The Trump campaign asked us to do that. Uh, did you ever make calls like that uh, regarding what you're calling these alternate electors? I was quoted in the Washington Post in the last 24 hours. Yes, I was part of the process to make sure there were alternate electors for when, as we hoped, the challenges to the seated electors would be heard and would be successful per the 12th Amendment of the Constitution and the Electoral Count Act. So your view, just, just for the record here, is that you could, as a lawyer to the Trump campaign, seat these electors in states where the process, the state results as overseen by the independent courts, as approved by the Supreme Court, found that Biden won. And you would put in what you call the alternate... The Supreme Court... Yeah, what you would... Hold on, let me finish the question, and you can go ahead. And you would then support putting in these alternate, or others call them fraudulent electors. You support that. You don't see any chance there that that could be against the law, Boris? It is absolutely not against law. It is actually according to the law. Now, you keep referring to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court never ruled on the merits. It only ruled on technicality. And many scholars, including myself and others, believe that they should have taken that case, the Pennsylvania-Texas case, on original jurisdiction because it was fully within their power to do so. But the Supreme Court absolutely never ruled on the merits but as you know, of the Boris, overwhelming yes, flaw that happened in 2020. As you know, the cases were so weak, they never reached the merits. It's not like Bush v. Gore, where they had the full case, they didn't even see, and that included many Trump-appointed justices, a reason to even go it was there. A different makeup, it was a different makeup of the court. Certain justices, like Clarence Thomas, disagreed and said they should have taken it up on original jurisdiction. The Supreme Court did not, and it is the full truth that the Supreme Court never ruled on the merits. And more and more information is coming out every day out of Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. I mean, this yeah, there's information was, in coming out. Let me, let me ask it like this as well. I understand that you have the right to advocate for your beliefs and your client. That's, that's why you're here. When you say alternate electors, that's your view of it. Of course, you also understand that there are open probes, including in Georgia, that prosecutors might look at it differently. You understand that if you are aiding and abetting the seating of fraudulent electors or voter fraud, that not only is that potentially against the law, but then you also would lose the lawyer-client privilege under the crime fraud exception for your, for your client, <laughs> the Trump campaign. First of all, Ari, I don't think that you are the one that's going to be determining, or your audience, whether there was any perpetration of fraud. I will tell you that the perpetration of fraud was absolutely done, and it was done by the Democrats, it was done by the left, by Mark Elias, and others. And that fraud was perpetrated on the American people. That's why, according to Doug Schoen, over 50 percent of Americans believe that there was fraud in the 2020 election that was substantial. 47-41, again, Doug Schoen, a Democrat, says that there was fraud which changed results in the 2020 election. So, Ari... Everything that was done was done illegally by the Trump legal team, by, according to, to the rules and under the leadership of, of Rudy Giuliani. We fought for the truth. And the truth is that there was overwhelming fraud in the 2020 election. And I am doing everything I can possible within all the rules, laws, and regulations to make sure that the truth comes out. Part of what you said is false, but we're going to move forward. I mentioned the reporting about this proposed draft order that may have come from a Trump lawyer in the transfer documents, according to the Supreme Court law, say to one here this week, uh, that says that there was an idea about appointing a special counsel to investigate the election uh, and have the military seize ballots. Were you aware of that plan at the time? 
Absolutely not. Didn't hear about it till I believe today. Had nothing to do with it. And I would caution you against reporting on any drafts that nobody knows where they came from. That's about as good as a paper napkin. Does it sound legal to you to have the military get involved? I'm not going to opine on some piece of paper that nobody knows who it came from that I haven't even read. Okay. Uh, when you look at what Peter Navarro has said here, would you describe yourself as basically on board with that plan, what he calls the sweep along with Bannon? You know, people can give different names to things. I've laid out exactly what we worked on. And what we worked on is to, A, prove the overwhelming fraud, which I believe we went a long way in doing. We had a, we had a very limited amount of time. More information has come out since. And then, B, to make sure that there were legal challenges to those electoral count votes. Those, those challenges were did happen. Unfortunately, the events that occurred disturbed those challenges. So that's what, uh, that's what took place, and I'm absolutely comfortable with it. And finally, how soon should we expect to see you testifying before the House committee? Uh, well, Ari, we'll, we'll see, as they say, we'll see what happens. But if you invite me back, you'll see me soon on this program. Always interesting. Uh, Boris Epstein, someone that the committee wants to talk to. I'm glad we got to talk to you first. Thanks for being here.